Okay, so in these examples, we're going to show how to solve quadratic equations when you're not given the zero on the right-hand side. So our first step is going to get, we're going to get the zero on the right-hand side, and we'll look at these examples, one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So we'll be going from the um, pulling out of grades common factor examples to the short method to the long method, okay? So example one, if we have 5x squared is equal to negative 2x, um, we have an equation and we have an x squared term as the highest pair of x in the equation. We also have an x term in there. We cannot solve this by taking the square root of both sides or anything like that, okay? Um, we, the only way to solve this equation or one way to solve this is to get zero on the right hand side, get the equation you know, equal to zero and then factor it and solve as we know how to do. So to get zero on the right hand side here we simply add 2x, don't we? If I add 2x that will be zero, won't it? So if I add 2x to the right, I must add 2x to the left hand side. So I have 5x squared plus 2x is equal to 0. And now I simply factor the left hand side and solve that. So press pause and factor the left hand side and solve it. So if I factor the left hand side, I would pull out a greatest common factor because I have an x squared term and an x term. I would pull an x out and x times 5x gives 5x squared. x times 2 gives 2x. So I have this is equal to 0. And my two factors are this x guy here and the 5x plus 2. So I'd say either my x factor is 0 or the 5x plus 2 is equal to 0. And this is simply x is 0. And this guy, if I solve him out, um, and I didn't give myself enough space, I should have. Subtract 2 from both sides, 5x equals negative 2. Then what? Divide by 5, right? And x is negative 2 fifths, okay? Which, as a decimal, would be negative 0 0.4, okay? So this solves out to be x is negative 2 fifths or, you know, negative 0 0.4. So I have two solutions, 0 or negative 2 fifths, two solutions, okay? So press pause and do example 2. You need to get 0 on the right-hand side. That's your first step. How about subtract 8x from both sides? Would that work? In which case you would have 2x squared minus 8x is equal to 0. And now simply factor the left-hand side and solve it. So you would pull out a 2 goes into both terms, pull a 2 out. x goes into both terms, so pull 2x out. So we'd have 2x times x minus 2x times 4 gives 8x is equal to 0. So we have 2x times x minus 4 equals 0. And we can say, okay, this times this is 0, so either my 2x equals 0 or my... Um, x minus 4 equals 0. Now if I solve this one, I'm just going to, yeah, if I solve this one, I would divide both sides by 2, which would give me, you know, x equals 0. Or if I solve this one, I would add 4 to both sides. So I'd have x equals 0 or x equals positive 4. Two solutions, okay? Sorry about the layout. And now for example 3, um, and I guess just before we do it, we'll just do a little bit of practice. If you're given an equation with an x squared term and x term and a number, you have to solve this by factoring. You've got an x squared term and an x term. You can't take square roots. It's not going to work. We've seen, seen it already trying that um, with the x squared term and an x term. So we have to get 0 on the right-hand side. So how do I get rid of this negative 4, so to speak? How do I get 0 on the right? Wouldn't I just subtract 4 from both sides? And then I just have x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0, right? How about this one? Press pause and, and get 0 on the right-hand side here. Here you would add 2x to both sides, wouldn't you? And always write the 
don't basically don't write this as x squared plus 1 plus 2x equals 0 because you want your x term in the middle. You want to write it like this, x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. If you put your x, square, x term in the middle, now you can factorize the left-hand side with the short method. So, so don't have your x term over here like that because it doesn't help. Okay. So let's try this one. If I have x squared equals 7x minus 6 and I want to get 0 on the right, I could just do it step by step. Subtract 7x from both sides, right? Now x squared and an x squared term and an x term there are not like terms, so we cannot put them together. We can just simply write x squared minus 7x is equal to negative 6, right? Now how do I get 0 on the right? Do I just add 6 to both sides, right? So I will simply have x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. And now I factor this guy with the short method because it's it has an x squared term, an x term, and a number, and then I solve it, right? So press pause and factor this with the short method. Okay, now I'll do it. Uh, 6 is 1 times 6, or 2 times 3. Two numbers that multiply this positive 6 and add to negative 7 might be two negatives, negative 1 and negative 6. See, they multiply to a positive, they add to a negative. So negative 1, negative 6, add to negative 7, multiply to positive 6. So this works. So if this times this is 0, either my x minus 1 is 0 or my x minus 6 is 0. So either x is add 1 to both sides positive 1 or x is add 6 to both sides positive 6. So 1 or 6 is the answer here. Okay. So here's example 4. It's exactly the same. It's very similar. Press pause and try example 4 by yourself. Okay, now I'll do it. We need to get 0 on the right-hand side, right? Then we need to factor the left-hand side, and then we use our zero product trick, our zero product rule. So if I, um, let's say, subtract 12 from both sides, okay, this gives me x squared minus 12 is equal to negative x, right? Now if I add x to both sides, I have x squared, and I'm going to put the x term in the middle. I'm like I'll write it all out. Just I mean, if I wrote x squared minus 12 plus x equals zero, this doesn't help me factorize because I have the x term all the way over here. What I want is I want to write that x squared, you know, plus x, and then minus 12 equals zero. So I have my x term in the middle, and now that helps me factor this with the short method. So this is a one x, isn't it? So press pause and factorize this and solve it. Okay, now I'll do it. It's going to be short method, so the answer will look like this. Find two numbers and multiply to negative 12 and add to positive 1. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Um, a negative 3 and a positive 4. Multiply them negative 12, add them positive 1. So we have x minus 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 0, so either x minus 3, this factor is 0, or the x plus 4 factor is 0, so either x is 3 or x is negative 4. Two solutions, okay? Now, this example, example 5 will require, example 5 will require the long method, okay? So, once again, the first step is the same. We have to get 0 on the right hand side. Factor the left hand side and then apply the zero product rule. So to get zero on the right hand side here I could subtract 5x from both sides and that would leave me with 2x squared minus 5x is equal to negative 3. Now how do I get rid of that negative 3? How do I turn that into a zero? Don't I just you know add 3 to both sides? And once again, remember, these are not like terms. I can't go negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2 anything because we have an x squared term, an x term, and a number. They're not like terms. We can't add them. So we go 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. I have 0 on the right. Now I can solve this with the long method. Okay. So 
I'm going to um, factorize this. I guess I'll factorize it up here. 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. So factorize this with the long method. Press pause and do it. Okay, now I'll do it. You just you should have went 2 times 3 is positive 6. And I go 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Find two numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add to negative 5. And they should be, I think 1 and 6 are going to help me. Um, positive 1. No, sorry, that's not going to work, is it? I need 2 and 3, don't I? I need negative 2 and negative 3. These two numbers multiply to give positive 6, and they add to give negative 5. Okay. A positive 1 and a negative 6 would not work. These would add to negative 5, but they would multiply to give negative 6, not positive 6. So the only two numbers that work here are my negative 2 and negative 3. So write this as negative 2x minus 3x, for example. So I have 2x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 3. Now factor these two terms. I pull a 2x out, 2x times x minus 1. I get, factor these two terms, and I can pull out a negative 1, because negative 1 times, oh, sorry, negative rather, negative 3, okay, because negative 3 times positive x gives negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 1 gives positive 3, right? So this, here we have a common factor of x minus 1 here, so this is x minus 1 times the 2x minus 3, right? So this whole thing factors to be x minus 1 times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So either x minus 1 is 0 or uh, 2x minus 3 is 0. So solve each one of these, add one to both sides, and this gives me x equals 1. Solving this one, add 3 to both sides. I have 2x equals 3. Then divide both sides by 2, and I have x equals 3 over 2, which is, of course, 1.5 as a decimal. So I have x is 1 or 1.5, two solutions, right? So the answer is, you know, x is 1 or 1.5. So press pause and do this example. 3x squared equals 8 minus 10x. Okay, now I'll do it. We need to subtract 8. We need to get 0 on the right-hand side to begin with. That's the first step. Get 0 on the right-hand side. So we'll have, for example, you might have had 3x squared minus 8 equals negative 10x. Okay. Then you might add 10x to both sides. And you should write this. Now that's 3x squared minus 8 plus 10x equals 0 because this doesn't help us factorize. If I want to factorize this, I need the x term in the middle. So I need to write this as 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 equals 0. Okay. And now factorizing this guy, I'm going to do it over here. 3x squared plus uh, 10x minus 8. I go 3 times negative 8. Is, so 3 times negative 8 is a negative 24. What two numbers multiply to negative 24 and add to 10? Well, if I list the pairs of factors of this, I get that, and then 2 times 12, and then 3 times 8, and then 4 times 6. So what two numbers add to 10x but multiply to negative 24? Press pause and find them if you haven't yet. Now... I'll show you what doesn't work is positive 4 and positive 6. These guys add to 10, but they multiply to positive 24, not negative 24. So they do not work. But if you look at 2 and 12, you could have, say, a negative 2 and a positive 12. These guys would add to 10, and they would also multiply to negative 24. We need to, to multiply to negative 24. So this can be written as, let's say, just for fun, I'm going to go 12x minus 2x. And now I have uh, 3x squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 8. Factoring these two terms, I pull a 3x out, and that's x plus 4. You know, press pause, please, and do this yourself. Okay, and now I'm going to keep going. And out of there, I can pull out a negative 2. A negative 2 times x plus 4. 
plus 4 gives the top. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So my common factor between these two terms is the x plus 4. So I can put him out and that times this 3x, you know, minus 2 gives the whole thing. Okay, so this factor is to be x plus 4 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. And um, so this times this is 0. That means either x plus 4 is 0 or 3x minus 2 is 0. So if I solve this one, I subtract 4 from both sides. And I have x is negative 4. If I solve this one, I add 2 to both sides. And I have 3x is 2. 3x equals 2. And then divide by 3 in both sides. And I have x equals 2 thirds. And as a decimal, that's 0 0.66, you know, 6, and so on, so on, so on. So the, the three decimal places, you know, we have approximately 0.666, okay? So we have two solutions, negative 4 or 2 thirds, okay?